Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial for Web Design Tuts. Another really awesome tutorial and today I'm going to uh, teach you how to create a CSS3 Will menu. Uh, so first of all I want to show you what it should look like when you're done. Uh, it's basically this round teardrop thing here um, and it's just a different variation of the various variations that are available in the source files as well as the actual Will menu. Uh, we call this Teardrop 2. And here on the left hand side in between the double border on what we call the nav holder is the main menu. Just hover over the main menu items and you get the sub menu items on the right hand side and you can even hover all the way across and get to the sub menu items here. So it's actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and dig into the code, okay? So and then another HTML5 feature is to just add the meta char set of um, U UTF-8. Okay? Next thing we're going to add is our title. And the title is going to be um, Wil Wilts. CSS3 navigational will menu. Okay? And you guys have to forgive me if uh, my typing is a little slower for you. I'm sorry, I learned to code, but I never learned to type. Next thing we want to add is the link rel style sheet. And as you'll notice, I won't add the type because. Uh, you don't have to do that for HTML5. So I'll just put in the href which is styles slash teardrop2 slash candy cane dot CSS or wherever you decided to put the style sheets at. And then media of screen. Okay? Next, we want to go ahead and add the, um, the style sheet for Internet Explorer. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. We want to use if less than IE9. Okay? And we'll go ahead and... Uh, okay. And then go ahead and add the link rel... style sheets href which will be styles slash ie dot css and then we'll put our media media of screen okay so we're going to use CSS pi to try to help um, Internet Explorer recognize some of the CSS3 styles. Okay, um, I entered this wrong, so let me go ahead and put the bracket here at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to want to close the head or our body, close out the body, and close out the HTML. Just like, just like any other HTML, um, you're probably going to insert this into whatever your existing HTML is, so you probably don't have to worry about that. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of Zen coding, um, and if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you what it is. Um, and it's a shorter way of coding HTML. So, for example, we'll do div id of menu wrap and inside of that would be div class wrap one inside of that div class wrap two and inside of that would be div class wrap three and div class wrap four and then inside of that we're going to go ahead and put a span okay with a class of img1 okay and then inside of that we're going to put img with a class 
of orbit, orbit frame, and the orbit class is mostly for the JavaScript that I included, but it's not necessary. Um, you can use it if you'd like to, though. We'll use a double bracket and an SRC of images slash card 18 dot JPEG. Okay? And then, and then we'll add another double bracket with an alt of card um, card 18. Okay? All we have to do is press Control Alt Enter, and it will go ahead and span all of that code out for you. So we have menu wrap with wrap one inside of it, wrap two inside of it, wrap three inside of it, and wrap four inside of it. And then we have our span with an image, and our image is inside of that span just perfectly the way that we want it. Okay, pretty simple, right? Zen coding is perfect. It's just such an easier way of coding if you can get used to it. I'm not going to use it throughout this entire tutorial for those of you that aren't familiar with it, but I will use it sparingly here and there. All right, so the next thing we want to add underneath this will be our div class completer okay and that's going to be in its own div I'm going to put div class completer2 and that will also be in its own div okay and then after that we want to add um, Let's go ahead and move that over. And then we want to add our div class and put wrap 5. Next will be div class nav holder. Okay? We'll go ahead and close out both of those divs. like so and uh, and that's really all we need for all of our containers so we have menu wrap and menu wrap is this entire um, kind of a, an off-white here in the background as you can see it is important to have the um, the wrapper here so that you can position the will however you'd like to then we have wrap 4, or wrap 1, I meant, sorry about that, which is the red area back here, the darker red. Wrap 2, which is the off-white here. Wrap 3, which is the red area here. Wrap 4, which is uh, this orange line that you see here. Then we have our image, which is here in the middle. And then we have our two completers, which is basically this right here. Okay? I'll bring up Firebug for you. Or Google Chrome. This would actually be the uh, web developer tool. And go ahead and take out the margin. And as you can see, the nav holder is holding the menu in place. And here, what looks like a black eye is actually the completer okay and it just gives a nice little round effect to it to complete the uh, to complete the nav holder so that it doesn't look so blocky then we have wrap 5 which is this white border here that you see and the nav holder which is the black area that you see around here okay so let's go ahead and move on that's pretty easy, wouldn't you agree? So let's go ahead and put in our menu. So the menu wrap will be UL 
class, UL class. I wanted to do some uh, Zen coding there, but it's uh, a class of menu build. Okay, we want to close that out. All right, and then we want to put our uh, first menu item here, so it'd be LIID menu one. Okay, and then we want to close that. And then inside of that, we want to add the actual link. So we're just going to use pound. Since this isn't actually going anywhere, and we'll put menu item one. Okay. All right. So underneath that, we want to go ahead and put the first sub menu, which would be li, or actually would be ul class of uh, sub menu one okay oh, it would actually be class sub menu and then sub one okay and we want to close that ul and then inside of that we want to put our first sub menu item which would be li class first Okay, we're going to name these as first, second, third, last. So first, close that. And then we'll put the actual link inside of it, which is pound for this. And sub menu item, and that's it. All right, so for the rest of them, essentially it's going to be the same. Okay, so instead of going through each one one by one, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and copy and paste. All right, so we have our first sim sub menu item, our second, the middle one which has no class, third, and last. And for all of the others, it's going to essentially be the same. So I'll go ahead and just, um, just I need to close out the menu one. Okay. And now I'm going to just go ahead and add in the rest of the menus for you. Just like that. Okay. Let's, let us organize it a little bit. just like that alright so let's move back up alright so we have menu 1 menu 2 which is essentially the same except for you have your class of sub 2 and menu 2 and since we only have two sub menu items we use first and second same for the third and the fourth. All right, and that is basically it for the HTML. Looks pretty easy, right? Put together pretty simply, nice and clean code. Now, if you're going to use the uh, JavaScript, you're going to want to insert the latest jQuery through a script of SRC. And as I mentioned before, because we're using HTML5, you can actually take the type out. Just like that. Okay? All right. After you have uh, put that code in there, before you really see anything, we're going to want to uh, put some styles in there, okay? So let's go ahead and start working on the styles. So, first thing is to use your font, okay? For me, I used uh, Franklin Gothic, and you can use a font face if you'd like to. Next thing would be your body, 
okay, which really you don't need to put your body in there because you probably already have a style sheet for that. But if you're going to use it as a standalone version, then you're going to want to add your body. And the same thing with your links. You most likely have a reset file with your uh, style sheets, but if you don't, then you can go ahead and add this and put de text decoration none and an outline of none. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to style is the menu wrap. And the menu wrap is this off-white portion here. Okay, all right. To do that, we will put ID of menu wrap with a background of off white. Okay? I'm going to make it 600 pixels with a font family of Franklin gothic medium font size which this is an ideal font size of 14 pixels with a letter spacing of one pixel and we want to make that important to stand above all the rest in the cascade so that this way your um, your text, your links inside of your menus are centered a little better. Okay? Next thing is we're going to style the um, the center image here, the rockable, because rockable is awesome, so we went ahead and used that. To do that, we will put an ID of menu wrap class, call on the class of orbit for the image, okay, add a height to the image of 210 pixels. This is ideal with a width of 210 pixels, a margin of 32 pixels which pushes it to the center. Let me show you. So we go to the image and let's take off that margin and see what happens alright so it takes it off the center and that's why you want the margin so that you have it nicely in the center of the wheel okay alright next thing would be position absolute so that we can move it however we like to alright and that's it for that Next thing would be to add, um, to style our menu links. To do that, we will put UL class menu build <clears throat> and UL class menu build UL. Okay. We will put a width of 80 pixels background for Internet Explorer we will put RGB 0 0 0 okay and for the for the rest of the browsers we will put background RGB a 0 0 0 and 0 0.1 for our opacity okay then we will put a padding of left zero and a left margin of 76 pixels okay now what we have just styled here is actually the hover spot in the middle so that when you hover over here it doesn't disappear okay if we did not style that and added our dimensions to it um, put a padding on it and a margin then when you go into the middle it would just disappear like that. so that is uh, very useful and we 
we have to put the uh, the opacity on there of um, 0.01 so that Internet Explorer can recognize that hover spot. Okay. All right. Let me move this down so that you can see the coding as it happens. Next thing we will style our individual main menu items. So we will put uh, UL class menu build and LI. All right. This will have a list style type of none because we don't want that but you may not have to add that if you have a, uh, a reset style sheet a position of relative plus we will add webkit border radius of 0 20 pixels 20 pixels and 0 okay after doing that, we should go ahead and add the rest of the border radiuses for the other browsers. So that would be Moz and your regular border radius. Next thing we want to do is put the background of none with a dark gray. So that would be um, 464646, okay? A height of 14 pixels. Pull it to the left by minus 177 pixels. A padding of 8 pixels plus a margin of 6 pixels, 0, 0, and a width of 140 pixels. Plus, we want to move the text with a text indent of 5 pixels and put a font color of white. Okay? So, what we did was with our text indent, we moved the text here to the left so that when you hover over it, we see this nice double border on the left hand side. Okay, and then we added a padding of 8 pixels to help center the actual link and uh, pulled it to the left. Otherwise, the main menu would be way over here. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on. Next thing will be UL class menu build UL class sub menu li okay so we are going to actually style the individual sub menu items let's add the gradient we will use a background of f2 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 for older browsers plus a moz linear webkit for chrome and safari and regular regular linear gradients plus our pi background which is controlled by CSS Pi to help out Opera a little bit. All right, we'll add a color to the font of a dark gray. Then we will put a position of relative. Push it to the right at 297 pixels. And then we will add a box shadow okay this is for chrome webkit shadow and minus two three twelve and minus seven okay put a color on it of we'll say one six one six one six Let's go ahead and add the other box shadows for other browsers. That would be Moz and your regular box shadow. So essentially we added the, um, the shadow to it so that it at least looks like 
that um, that the sub menu is underneath the uh, respective wrapper. Okay, all right. Now we will style the um, each individual sub menu item. So to do that, we will put UL class menu field, UL class sub menu, and LI class first. And that's the first sub menu item. Put a margin of margin left of minus 12 pixels and an opacity opacity of we'll say 0.70. And essentially we are just adding a slight fade to the sub menu items. So when you hover over you see the first one is 0.70 opacity this one is 0.85 100% 85 and 0.70 so it just adds a little nice fading effect so I'll just go ahead and copy and paste the code in there for the rest of the sub menu items since you already know what they do this one is for the middle items second and third actually this is for these yes yeah, second and third of 85 okay and for the middle one we don't have to put an opacity obviously uh, since it is 100 percent okay then we will go ahead and put our left one or our last one of 0.70 opacity okay okay after that we will put UL class menu build li select the sub menu of that um, of that main menu item okay alright so obviously we don't want to display the sub menu before we have hovered over a main menu item so we put display none we will put a top of minus 169 pixels put a position of absolute so that we can uh, move it however we want and right of minus 86 pixels add a font color of 565656 five, six, five, six, with a width for the uh, for the sub menu of 160 pixels plus we will put a webkit border radius of 0 4 4 and 0 okay now we should go ahead and add the rest of the border radius for each other browser. A padding of 50 pixels. Height of 24 pixels. And for Internet Explorer we will make our background RGB 255, 255, 255. Now for other browsers that can recognize it, we will put RGBA of 255, 255, 255, and with a zero opacity. Okay? All right. Now, Let's go ahead and style each main menu item. And first we should use the universal styles for each main menu item. So we simply add UL class menu build LI ID of the menu. So menu one, menu two, three, and four. Let us add a border radius to that. 
of 20 pixels, 0, 0, and 20 pixels, plus a box shadow of minus 2, 7, 8, and minus 7 with a color of 161616. Okay? Alright. So the shadow helps us to um, at least create the effect of it being behind the nav holder here. So this is actually the, uh, the shadow right here. Now we will add the linear gradients and just as we've done before we will add the gradients for each different browser. Okay, but I only need to show you one so the gradient is F0000F zero, 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 at 52% with CC0000 zero, 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 at 60% with 990,000 at 84% and F, F, F at 84% with 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6 at 85% and 36, 36, 36 at 92% and 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 at 100%. Okay? All right. After we have added the gradients, we can go ahead and put a height of 18 pixels with a padding of 8 pixels position position absolute with a top margin of 100 pixels because we want to move the menu down to about here otherwise it would be up here and we don't want that then we will add a width of 138 pixels okay alright okay so let's go ahead and style each individual um, each individual menu item but essentially what we are going to do is transform or rotate each of these menu items so that it looks like they are going around the wheel menu here also we will be adding a top margin so that each menu item is directly under the uh, last menu item okay alright so now that you know that um, we don't really need to go through each line of code individually so I will just copy and paste it in here alright so for menu 2 we will use rotate of minus 10 degrees plus a margin top of 141 pixels and push it to the left by 5 pixels Okay, so menu 2 has been rotated by minus 10 degrees and pushed from the top down to 141 pixels and pushed to the left a little bit up against the border here at 5 pixels. Alright, and give you that nice little rounded effect. Okay, same thing for menu 3, rotate of minus 21 degrees margin top of 181 pixels and a left margin of 18 pixels and menu 4 of minus 32 degrees top margin of 218 pixels left margin of 38 pixels alright after you've done that you should be good to go on the main menu items same thing for the sub menu items okay so let's go ahead and take a look at that the sub menu items as you can see here are kind of um, you know some are bumped up against rat 5 some against rat 4 one against rat 1 so we will just rotate them because 
if we don't ro rotate them, they will be rotated with the main menu items. So all of these will be rotated way up here. So we just add a simple rotate and line them up evenly against the uh, respective wrapper. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to grab the code for each each sub menu and paste it in there. So for menu one. We have a margin top of zero because we don't need to push it down and pushed it to the left by 20 pixels. All right. For, for some menu one, we have a margin top of zero because we don't need to push it down any and a left of 20 pixels. Okay. For menu two, for some menu two, we have a transform of 10 degrees with a left of 24 pixels and we pushed it down by 6 pixels with a top margin. For submenu 3, 21 degrees, left 27 pixels, top margin 16 pixels. And submenu 4, rotate by 32 degrees left of 28 pixels and a top margin of 27 pixels. Now, after we've done that, we will go ahead and display the submenu after hovering over a main menu item. To do that, we will simply put UL class menu build li hover over the menu item and select the sub menu. Put a display of block and now it is shown. Now it shows up at when you hover over the main menus. Okay? Alright. Good stuff. Additionally, we need to put position of absolute with a zero for left, a width of 400 pixels and a height of 200 pixels. Okay? Alright. After we've done that, the next thing we would want to do is style the actual links. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started on that. UL class menu build UL sub menu sub menu item and link. Okay? For the font dark gray again with with an opacity of 0.65. Now for Internet Explorer, Filter, Alpha, um, Opacity equals 65. Oh, 65. Okay? Okay. So, what we have done here is make the text inside of the submenu with a um, sort of transparent. So when you hover over them, they are 100% opacity and not 100% when you hover out of them. So it adds just a nice little effect and plus it brings the, uh, the hovered menu item to the front. Next will be hovering over the sub menu link. So UL class menu build, UL class sub menu, li link, and hover with an opacity of 1. Filter for, um, for Internet Explorer with an opacity of 
equals 100. All right. Now we will style the links inside of the main menu items. So for that would be UA class menu build main menu link okay with a font color of FFBE8F and that creates the kind of peach color here All right. now we add a display of block and a width of 100%. Alright. Now let's go ahead and hover over those main menu items. To do that, UL class menu build. Okay, menu item, hover over it, and select the link. Okay, put a color on it for the font of white with a left border of double five pixels and we'll make it 880,000 okay so we go back to the teardrop menu and hover over it and you, as you can see the links turn to white and you get this nice double border on the left hand side same thing for the sub menu hover over it and you get this nice double border on the left hand side okay so now let's go ahead and style our containers our wrappers first we use the First, we create the universal styles for wrap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the nav holder. Okay. So, what we want to do is make them round. So, we add our border radius of 220, 0, 200, and 220. Put them in the middle or center it with a margin 0 auto at a position of relative spelled that wrong position of relative okay make it important okay and push it down by 20 pixels next thing we'll style is the nav holder And we want to make the background for the nav holder transparent, so put none and transparent. Okay. With a border color of, we'll say 121212. Now we want to make the um, border style of solid for the top, hidden on the right, solid on the bottom, and double on the left. So now with that you basically get a black, a thick black border that's empty on the right hand side and double on the left hand side. You get this nice little effect of a placeholder for the main menu items and an area for the sub menu items. Okay? Alright. Next would be the border width of 73, medium 73, and 73. Put a height on it of 252 pixels and a margin of minus 92 pixels so that we can put it more in the center a top of zero and a width of 324 pixels alright okay now we will 
style individually each wrap. Class, wrap one. Okay. Now, we put the gradient for that wrap here. Essentially, you will be getting a, um, a light red as well as a dark red for the first wrapper with a height of 394 and a width of 394. Okay. After you've done that, you'll get this nice red gradient here. Okay. And by 394, for each other wrap, we will be putting the height and width of 40 pixels less so that we can get this nice even stroke for each wrapper in between it okay at least for these three so now for wrap two I will copy paste you will have a gradient of white and off-white as well as a height and width of 354 plus two box shadows of 15 pixels 31 19 and 8 with a color of black with a 0.6 opacity also an inset box shadow, box shadow of 0 minus 30 46 and 1 at black with an opacity of 0.65 okay after you've done that you will create this nice little bevel effect where you get this shadow that comes down into wrap one from wrap two to wrap one and underneath as well so create some nice little effects with only two box shadows all right now we go ahead and do wrap three I'll copy and paste again 40 pixels less with a light red and a dark red and wrap four okay with wrap four we will put a solid border of two pixels with a red color so you will get this wrap four here with a slight little red red border here on the right hand side. With wrap four, we will add a solid border with two pixels and make it red. A gradient of dark red, medium red, and light red as well as a box shadow of 1172 black with an opacity of 0.65 as well as an inset shadow of 1102 125 128 and 32 for the colors with an opacity of 0.32 as well as another inset shadow of 5596 with 21, 252, and 116 for the colors, and 0.81 for the opacity. Okay? After you've done that, you will get this nice orange wrap here. Okay? with As well as a shadow here to create a nice little bevel effect. Now, same as before, 274 pixels by 274 pixels. Okay. Now, we will do wrap 5, which is the white area around the center image. Add a box shadow of 9, 9, 5, 0, make it black with an opacity of 0.75 another inset shadow of 5 and actually make that last one inset with another shadow of 5 5 
0.750, make it black with an opacity of 0.75, put a solid border of 20 pixels and make it white, 214 by 214 and push it down by 10 pixels to put it to the center. After you've done that, you get this nice white teardrop here above the center image and the inset shadow kind of as the effect of it being over the, uh, the center image. Okay. Now that you've done that, the last part we should do is the completers. So we will put completer for the first one will be display none and this is only for the teardrop version because you won't have the top completer up here but you will in the other versions okay now we want to style the second completer completer 2 okay and we want to rotate it by 110 degrees to align it better with all of the other wrappers and push it down by 195 pixels okay next thing is to style completer 1 as well as use universal styles for uh, completer 1 and 2 so class completer class completer 2 okay and now we will put a border radius of 0 120 0 113 as well as a transform a rotate of minus 20 degrees okay next we will put a background attachment of scroll make the background color a um, a very dark gray one two one two one two we want no background image the background should be in the center so background position of zero zero and we want it to repeat so background repeats and repeats now we put a height of 135 as well as a position of absolute pull it from the right at of 24 pixels or actually minus 24 pixels and pull it up at minus 56 pixels and at a width of 130 pixels okay and that's it once you get done with those completers you get this nice this nice teardrop menu here as well as it's completed here uh, because of what you've just styled so this is what it should look like have your image in the middle hover over it and you see how it changes get your nice border on the left hand side of the link plus you should be able to hover across all the way across and get to the sub menu items okay okay so um, thanks for taking a look at this tutorial. Please remember that since this is pure CSS3, that um, IE support is limited. 
And uh, if you would like to learn how to do the JavaScript version and be able to rotate your images as you hover over each um, menu and sub-menu item, uh, just let me know in the comments box and I'll be happy to show you how to use that. Okay? Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.